<laughs> All right. So, um, so again, I'm just going to follow the steps. I'll talk my way through it. If you have questions, please raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to stop and re-explain a step. But I've been pretty clear about the steps, and we've been doing quite a bit of examples. First step is to group the first two terms. I do it every time. That's what I'd like to see when you guys are doing it. The second step is to factor so a is equal to 1. I only want you to factor out of the first two terms, because that's what we're trying to create our perfect square. So in this case, I'm going to factor out a 2. By factoring out a 2, I'm left with x squared minus 5x plus 5 equals 0. Is there everybody following me with that? Yes? You can. But again, that's not, what, that's not the idea of what we're trying to do. If you were to solve by factoring, then yeah, you could factor out the x and thing. But the main important thing is the purpose of completing the square is to create what's inside of there a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to leave the x's there. We just need to make sure our a is equal to 1. Okay? So yeah, it's not truly factoring out a GCF. You're just factoring so a is equal to 1. Okay? Then we take our b divided by 2 and square it. And this is not going to be very fun because, again, it ends up being a fraction. right? But we're not going to convert it to a decimal. We're just going to leave it as is. And we see that it's 25 over 4. So therefore, we take that number, add it inside the parentheses, and subtract it outside the parentheses. So I have 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4. Yeah. No? Oh. Plus 5 minus 25 over 4. And then, since this 25 over 4 is being multiplied by 2, right, by applying the distributive property, if you were to apply the distributive property right now, that 2 is being multiplied by this, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, this 25 over 4 needs to be multiplied by 2 as well. Equals 0. Okay. Now, one thing we can notice, 2 divided by 4 reduces to what? 1 half. So I can reduce that to 1 over 2. Does everybody agree with me? Just simplifying things makes it easier. 2 over 4 is equivalent to 1 over 2. Right? So to always have to, and whenever you guys have fractions, always look to simplify your fractions. All right, now this, you might not know the factored form of this. That's why I always said x plus b divided by 2 squared. What was my b divided by 2? 5 over 2. So I have 2 times x minus 5 halves, because it's plus or minus, the same thing as subtracting. Now we have another issue. How am I going to do, I have a space over here. How am I going to do 5 minus 25 over 2? Now I'm multiplying a whole number, or a whole number, subtracting a fraction from a whole number. Well, to subtract fractions, if you guys remember, you've got to have common denominators. So I could easily rewrite this as 5 over 1 and multiply by 2 over 2. Because we already agree that whenever you multiply a fraction, the same in the top and the bottom, you produce an equivalent fraction, right? So that's OK. So I have 10 halves minus. 25 halves. When you have fractions with the same denominator, you keep the denominator the same and just apply the operation to the numerator. So 25 minus, or 10 minus 25 is? Negative 15. OK. So that gives me negative 15 equals 0. Is everybody following me? Oh, wait a minute. Is this the same problem? No, something went wrong. Huh? Yes, it is. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Oh, I was looking at another problem. OK, never mind. Yeah, what? OK, well, I'm not done yet. I'm still, I still got to go. Um, so now, to solve, we got to get the 15 halves to the other side. So you have 2 times x minus 5 halves squared equals 15 halves 
right? Now I need to undo multiplication by 2. So I divide by 2. Do I need to show you guys what this would be? Can you guys think about this? Multiplying by the reciprocal on the top and bottom would produce 15 over 4. Yes? Is everybody going to see that in their head, kind of? So therefore, I have x minus 5 halves squared equals 15 over 4. Now, to undo the square root, take the square root, take the square root. I can't take the square root of 15, but I can take the square root of 4. So I end up with x minus 5 halves um, equals plus or minus the square root of 15 over 2. Remember, whenever you introduce a square root, you have to include plus or minus. And then I just add 5 halves to both sides. So therefore, x equals 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 15 over 2. And that would be your finalized answer. Whoa, that's kind of crazy, Mr. McLogan.